to both of you um, and congratulations on the film. I had no idea what to expect and I was so, so moved by it when I watched it. And and I really wanted to start with you, uh, Valdemar, with really asking the origin of Lamb, but specifically kind of was it was it an image or a character or a scene that came to you first? Kind of where what was the origin of this of the film? It was uh, like a yeah, I was collecting a lot of uh, like a images uh, and I was making, you know, some kind of mood book or, you know, where I was collecting paintings and drawings and uh, yeah, you know, just uh, somehow coming up with the mood, you know, of, of film that I wanted to do. And uh, then my producer producers introduced me to Sean, the writer, and uh, I showed him this book and after that we start working together. And can you talk a little bit about that collaborative process with him on, on co-writing the film? Yeah, you know, it was, uh, I think we start working together like 2009 and so it was a very slow process and uh, uh, usually we just met like once a week and just talked about uh, trying to come up with some scenes because uh, what you know, we, we knew from the beginning that, you know, uh, we knew that it would be about sheep farmers and Ata. So, yeah, we were just... Uh, but it was quite playful process, I've heard. Yeah. It... Sometimes you, you were <laughs> acting out certain parts and you were... You yeah. played all characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we played, the, you know, most of the scenes and... Uh, so Did, Were you Ata sometimes? Yeah, you know, we, we just changed uh, roles, uh, so... I love that. So you've been Maria, you've been Arthur, yeah. you've been Ingmar. <laughs> I love that. I wish that would have been filmed and made it into um, the bloopers or something. But yeah. um, Numi, I wanted to ask you um, about kind of your fresh impression of Maria when you saw, when you read her on the page. And what was your entry point into the character? Valdemar and his producer Ren came to London, to my house, and um, approached me with this beautiful project. And they brought a package of uh, that contained um, his visual book, which was kind of a thick little Bible of disturbing, beautiful, dark, intriguing images, drawings, photographs, so like a collection of like things from all over the world and his own drawings um, and the script and a book of poems of shown. And those three components when I started to take part of it and I started to look into to Valdemar's universe, I just saw the movie come to life because the script was, you know, if you've seen, it's very little dialogue, so it's very yeah. visual. And, and then, you know, kind of seeing Valdemar's um, images and realizing how he wanted to do it and, and, and then feeling uh, Maria's pain and the loss of a child and her, kind of struggle and determination to come back to life and to find life again and be a mother again. All these components just made this feel like the most amazing dream project and something I've been waiting for for, for many, many years. So yeah, I just fell in love with him, the project and Maria <laughs> straight away. <laughs> And, and I kind of wanted to ask you as well about playing a character with who uses so few words. Kind of the dialogue is very sparse. It's it's a lot about the feeling and the body language and the the landscape. Kind of how did you how did you find playing a character who expresses so much by saying so very little? It was um, it felt like a great gift had been given to me because it's really you have to just live it. You have to be in it 360 like there's no breaks there's no you don't you, you don't step in and out you're just inside and you know i never really knew where the camera was or what you were filming or you know and also working with animals and and mm -hmm. kids you just have to be there fully present yeah you, you know because you can't fake it you know uh, no because you have to see it you know in your it's face the eyes or... i mean it's just i would say that it's a different way of communicating it's just not verbal it's still dialogue heavy but just not with words interesting 
And and kind of a question for you both, really, is about the shoot, because you, you've just mentioned kind of working with with children and with a lot of animals, kind of which sound like the most some of the most difficult things to be working on when you're trying to make a film. How was that process like for you? It, it you know, uh, it was much easier than, uh, you know, uh, than I thought it would be somehow because I mean the animals got a lot of rehearsals mm. I came <laughs> like you know I came the day before we started filming so I was like you know it was a bit unfair yeah. <laughs> you auditioned them and yeah. they, you know you had work sessions and yeah I, I had more time with them than Numi yeah know, so, so <laughs> I felt like I had you know to crawl myself up to reach the level of the animals <laughs> I mean, no, we had to be very patient. It was just every day was, you know, um, shooting with, you know, let's say there's a scene when I'm putting Arta to sleep and we would start with a lamb and then when the lamb didn't want to play with me and was too wild and too loud, we switched to a baby, the human baby, and then, you know, baby started crying and then we like, gave it to the mom and, you know, just it was just, um, we had to work in a total different way. But it strangely enough it just it just worked so, you know i think we accepted that it was a different universe and you can't really be on a clock like you mm. can't like be hitting specific marks or you know oh we only we we got to complete this scene by you know 10 30 in the morning then move on to the next one we you yeah, just had to be more mobile and more open mm -hmm. And, and can I talk actually, can we talk a little bit about baby Ada actually, because I'm very intrigued about how you actually made her real in the film and also by by the choice to show her kind of halfway through the film, because at the beginning, we don't really know who who were who Maria is nursing, you know, is it is it a baby lamb? Is it is it something else? So can you talk a little bit about the revelation of baby Ada in the film? Uh, yeah, I, I think it was needed uh, to, you know, this time that you, you don't, uh, you're not sure if what if it's a lamp or if it's a half humor, because somehow, it, then uh, when you see her, you know, you, you I think you uh, accept her, you know. I think people almost ex imagine something worse something really disturbing or really mm. like kind of uh, like a misfit somehow and then she's really beautiful you know <laughs> it's just like she's a bit odd but, you know so it's almost like i do think people build up something more horrible i you know I, i've i've talked to some people that think that you know they are getting crazy or you know mm. so you know I, yeah, but I, I think this time was needed, you know, to give them to see, you know, your routine uh, every day and to... to get to know us. I yeah. mean, Maria and Ingmar. But it was also interesting, like in an earlier draft or like on the page, Atta did speak a little bit. And then while you, when we started shooting, I kind of you, you started feeling that she shouldn't talk. It's almost like, you know, with, with dogs and pets, you know, you kind of if they don't they, they they can't speak back you know so you start you you kind of give them the life you want them to have and you read into their eyes and the way they move and you it's it's your kind of interpretation of what they do that will become the truth instead of them standing for a specific truth yeah and you know i, I think you know just giving the audience uh, you know that they can somehow create data and you know i, I we thought that was more interesting uh, than, you know, she would talk. She's almost like a, you know, she's like a blank canvas. And then f it's the audience will paint her and kind of fill her in with what they want her to be. And we've heard so many crazy things. <laughs> and also like, there's a lot of speculations on like where it will go and, mm -hmm. you know, what happens like after. And, you know, uh, with the sequel, like all this kind of weird stuff. And we're like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what have been some of the weirdest um, theories that you've heard? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, there are so many. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, what, what I, I, I think is very interesting is uh, the people that I have met that uh, have stopped eating meat after watching the film. 
-hmm. and there are you know there are a few people that uh yeah told me this interesting and and kind of i wanted to um talk as well about the the motherhood element of the film and how and how kind of Marie, especially kind of the relationship between her and baby Ada. Um, Numi, can you talk a little bit about how you you went into that side of Maria, that protective, very maternal side that's also, you know, I think it's implied or at least I read it that way, is dealing with the grief from from something in her past. When we first get kind of introduced to Maria, she's in a place where she can't allow herself to feel and to open because it's just too much and she would collapse. She wouldn't function. So she just shut that emotional door and then she's just getting on with life, but she's not alive. Uh, and when Arta is born, that becomes the bridge and the possibility for her to, to deal with the trauma and also to be a mother again and to, to live and act out all those things that she imagined herself doing with the first art, I think. And, the, and so art becomes like a, a, almost like medicine or the cure or the possibility to, to, for, 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 the, for that side of her to, to bloom and to come to life. And that also allows her to start heal the internal scar that is so deep that she kind of thought she would never come back from. So art is a necessary uh, she, I mean, Maria's desperation to be a mother kind of blinds her a bit and makes her, and the need to be a mother is so strong. So she kind of, she, she takes Ata and she makes her hers, even though she knows that it's not hers to keep. And that, you know, um, and, and it also brings her to place of, places of aggression and really like a black and white, yes, you say the protective side of her, it's also really brutal. It is, and then that scene with kind of with baby Ada's biological mother is particularly brutal. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you both as well about the the figure of Peter. And I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing the character's name. Um, can you talk a little bit about him bursting this beautiful family life bubble when he comes into the story and why that character is so important to to move the film? Peter. No, I, I think, you know, he he's very important, you know, because uh, you know he is asking all the questions that probably everybody is thinking about, and uh, yeah, because somehow <clears throat> you are living in a bubble, you know, and uh, so he he somehow he's a threat. Yeah, I mean he's the outside. He's the outside. He's the eyes of. He's the sober eyes on on a quite strange and disturbing <laughs> situation, but he's also a threat because Maria did have a closer connection to him in the past mm -hmm. and then she decided to go a different route and he comes back and the, just his pure presence kind of threatens the very uh, fragile love that is that is you know that that Maria and Ingvar is trying to heal so so for many aspects and for many reasons he is he's dangerous for the happiness and you just get rid of all the threat. Uh, yes. Because uh, I, <laughs> I, I think, you know, uh, you know that, you know, it, it will not last for a very long time. Yeah. So, you know. You... I mean, I'm on a clock. Yeah. And also, I mean, she, what's really beautiful and really reflects like the Icelandic society a bit that I, that I saw where I grew up, um, you know, the, the, the women are the doers. My grandmother was the one running the family. And, you know, you can see Maria is the one driving the tractors. She's the one delivering, like pulling out the baby lamb. She's the one marking the lamb and Ingvar is inside cooking. So it is kind of, it's almost a bit reversed from what you used to see, which I really love. It's a very, from that perspective, very kind of an equal, um, the, 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 the partnership in, mm -hmm. in farm life is very equal. And, and I kind of wanted to ask on that note about the, the farm and the landscape that we see, which is there's it's gorgeous and it's also very kind of gothic -y almost. Um, can you talk a little bit about the um, that aspect of the film, about the, the visuals and the sparse Icelandic landscape that you capture? Yeah, we we we, we looked for this farm, you know, for a very long time and uh, uh, we drove around Iceland a few times. 
and uh, we sent out like a uh, drawings of uh, the dream farm you know two farmers and uh, all the people that we knew and uh, but uh, you know uh, you also made a little clay farm yeah 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 we took a photo of that and we <laughs> he made a farm out of clay yeah. and he wanted to find a specific like that farm and he he drove around Iceland a few times to find the farm from his dream. <laughs> but Didn't find it, so no. he had to settle for something else. Yeah, and we we know that you know my dream farm uh, do not exist in Iceland. But you know we've uh, my brother sent me photos of uh, this farm, and uh, we went there and you know we saw that it was uh, somehow rounded by these amazing mountains and nobody had lived there for 25 years so we could somehow just uh you know made it uh, at, at uh, you know maria and Ingvar's home you know how, how it was like no interruptions like it was just us it was like n nothing disturbing nothing interacting with us you know when you drove into that valley you know your phone just died there was no signal on your phone and you were really kind of entered a different world and and it, 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 you know, I could feel how we were drifting, and the outside world was mm. like like slowly fading more and more, and we were kind of going deeper and deeper into the world of Lamb, which is kind of exactly what watching Lamb feels like as well. You kind of drift into into this world, and you live there for the duration of the film. And I find it very interesting that people call it a horror film, and I wondered your opinion on that. Kind of, do you think of Lamb as a horror film? No. No, me neither. <laughs> I think it's a it's a family drama. I slightly agree. different. <laughs> Just yeah. a, one little element that is. Yeah, it's it's a it's a drama with this one surrealist element. Thank you both so much for your time and for making lamb as well. Um, thank you. Thank you.